Next, sorry, the next player I want to get to when it comes to um, the official visitors is, is the one you said that's a late ad in Jalen Thompson out of Cass Tech, somebody that you said strongly to Michigan State previously. Is this a good sign, or is this just a thing when it comes to him taking an earlier visit to Penn State on, a, on an official? Mm -hmm. So he has taken seven visits to Michigan State, and as we say all the time, follow the visits. And it's yeah. when you have that amount of visits – since uh, last summer, I believe it is, it's, it's hard to ignore. So if I was still making a pick today, I'd probably lean towards the Spartans. Now, with that said, he didn't really, he came on the Penn State's radar, of course, earlier in, in 2022, but it wasn't until he came for the blue-white game that it really felt like, okay, Penn State's a serious contender here. And he spoke very highly of that experience and, and the entire coaching staff after that. So I do think that there's a real chance that this is a this is Penn State second, Michigan State first, and and Penn State is you know going to going to give their best shot this weekend. What what also grabs my attention though is that I was fully expecting him to come next weekend. Uh, I believe Penn State had that set from what I was told, and now it got bumped to this weekend. Well, we learned it got bumped to this weekend because he's going to Michigan State next weekend, and you know Michigan State of course will get the final visit there. So. That certainly grabs my attention, but uh, you know the fact that he's returning is is big, and that's important for Penn State, and we'll see uh, just where where it ends up. But yeah, I, I would have to still lean towards towards the Spartans here. Uh, but of course, defensive end is is a, certainly a, an interesting position here with with uh, quite a few guys kind of putting out top lists that didn't include Penn State. Uh, Thompson is a four star prospect right now. At mm -hmm. one three, we have him as a ninety one uh, overall, which is a low four star, but uh, he's still a top top player it's uh number 184 nationally for us so an on 300 player yeah and uh in the consensus he's number 232 so he's a, he's a four star i believe on all four sites a pretty consistent player at 63 240 and uh has now become one of penn state's most important defensive ends the issue again of course is man that familiarity with michigan state now the spartans getting that final official visit yeah won't be easy to beat out yeah, I, we, we started the summer talking about is it better to have the first one or the last one when it comes to official visits. Penn State got the first one between Michigan and Penn State with Tyreek Blanding. We're predicting a commitment because he canceled the second one. It would it would be a surprise to see uh, uh, Jalen Thompson do that here, but it just goes to show you it's a case-by-case -case basis. You can't really paint with those broad strokes, which is what you said <laughs> when I asked you the question the first time. Uh, I want to go mm -hmm. back to Tamarian Parker then. Is this a big weekend to find out more information from him about his relationship, how serious he is with Penn State after the official visit? Is he somebody you're keen to follow up with afterwards? Yeah, a very important player. Like, again, another defensive end. Uh, they, they need to really hit it off with defensive ends because that board is starting to thin out a bit. The, the issue with Tamarian Parker is that he, he flat out admitted to colleagues of ours that Florida and Tennessee were pretty much neck and neck. Yeah. I think Florida's the actual favorite. And, and he also said then that Michigan State's third on that list. So Michigan State, man, they are coming on really freaking strong yeah. in recruiting at the moment. So it's it's an interesting one. But uh, he just came back from a visit to Florida. I believe that was on June 9th, June 8th, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, like I said, and he's coming to Penn State this weekend, Michigan State on the 24th. So I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to win this one out. But I will say that – since I don't know about March or so, this is one of those players that, from a relationship perspective, things have really become much more consistent from what they were back in the fall or early in this year. Uh, everybody's just really been kind of speaking highly of of the way that relationship has advanced, and of course, he's coming for an official visit, right? So, so yeah. clearly something has ticked up there. But this will be pretty. I, I I think this would be Penn State's one and only shot. I mean, he he does have official visits for later in the year, and you know, he doesn't seem like he's in a rush to decide, but I don't – maybe he'll make it up here for a game in the season. I mean, there's there's right. talk about him going to Florida for an official in October. I will say that that, that Florida visit recently was a, an unofficial visit. So Penn State this weekend, Michigan State the following. We'll see what's up with Tennessee there. They are also in the mix there. But uh, Penn State has some work to do with this one. Yeah, so – Kind of not a Hail Mary, but definitely this has to be a very, mm -hmm. a very big weekend for Penn State with uh, T.J. Parker. The rest of the defensive end position, uh, we talked about this quite a bit as far as it's it's a bit wide open. Neo Avery officially out of the competition there. He uh, not not much of a surprise, but what was the update with Penn State and Neo Avery? And where where's the next where, where does the eyeball turn next if 
uh, in the next couple of weeks, it's clear that Tamarian Parker not as interested at Penn State, and uh, if Jalen Thompson commits, it, I, maybe not a name, but a tier of player. We'll see. What do you think is next? I I don't it's, I don't know to be honest. I mean, I've been so focused on these visits that you know that's something I will circle back on at the end of the month. But I, I just kind of want to see this. I'm just taking it one week at a time right now. To be <laughs> frank, like it is one and no mentality. There, well, there's just, there's a hundred questions, right? I can't have yeah. answers to everything. Like, and then that's yeah. not directed to you. It's like directed to everybody on the board. Like, I just I don't have a real answer for that at the moment. You know, we know guys like Joseph Mapu are still out there. DJ Samuels is somebody they've always been interested in. But I mean, I, to me, I would think that they would probably circle back with like a Mason Robinson, Michael Kilbain. They like I don't I don't know if that's somebody they'll circle back on. But uh, I see them pushing harder for guys that maybe didn't have them in top fives, like Neo Avery, for example. Yeah, he didn't have Penn State in his top six, but is that really going to be over with? I, I don't know if that's if I'm ready to go there yet. We'll see. I mean, there okay. seems to be some sort of disconnect. He was supposed to be here for an official visit last weekend, canceled it. I, I don't know all the details there, but I, I'm just I don't want to completely write that one off yet. There's a long way to go until these guys can sign, and right. then and other players will will certainly emerge. But like, if I could give you a name for like who exactly is is next on that DN list, uh, talk to me. July one. <laughs> Give me a name. Me through, Give me a me name. Damn these, it. <laughs> yeah. Get me through these next couple weekends, and uh, and I'll get back to you. But I mean, let's see. I mean, who knows? Maybe Jalen Thompson they'll hit it off with, and it won't yeah. matter. And of course, I mean, the Jameel Lyons is a defensive end, right? So yep. I mean, they need yeah. probably one more, and and they'll be done there. I think three defensive tackles, two defensive ends is what makes the most sense there. So. Yep. Yeah, I guess fans are maybe a little bit concerned about it, which I understand. I mean, they, they, you know, Umazulu and a bunch of J. J Brown Harvey was another one they missed on the other day. But I just, I, I see them circling back to some of these guys, someone popping up down the road. We see it every year that, you know, got this time of the year, it, oh, it looks like Penn State's out of it. And then boom, they're showing up on campus in September and signing in December. So yeah. it, they'll, they'll work it out. So with the presumed, and, and I always, I, this is always a gray area, right? So it's like, you put in a pick for Ty- Tyreek Blanding. It is a neon boardwalk sign saying Penn State's going to be the, the target there. But he has yet to commit as of recording of this show. So mm-hmm. presuming he's a part of the class, how do you feel about the defensive line even with that whole defensive end? How, how are you feeling about this class up front and uh, the situation they have with the three players they do? Yeah, I mean, Matthias, I, I really want to learn more about Matthias as a D-lineman. Of course, we, you know, we saw a film of him. He played it last year. But I, I, mean, I was always so focused on tight end there or offensive tackle that, yep. you know, I'm, I'm going to be really curious to see how he plays. But from a size perspective, from an athletic athleticism perspective, there's a lot to like there. I think Jamil Lyons is certainly the guy that excites me the most. But I also have testing numbers on Jamil Lyons, and I don't have them for everybody else, right? So yeah. that's a big part of it. I would say it's it's a good group, not an elite group, and and that's what's so hard at defensive line because <laughs> there's there's only so many elite guys that are that size and that fast, and that, and that goes for tackle and end, yeah. uh, really. So it's 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 one of those positions, man, that's really hard uh, to to get those truly top tier guys at, and that's because all those guys are going to Georgia, Alabama, you know, the, all, all those kind of schools right now. There's only a handful of them every year, but. Jameel Lyons is a, certainly an impressive player. He deserves, you know, to to be a four star prospect. Matthias, of course, is ranked highly, and mm-hmm. and Tyreek, like we just talked about, if we get some testing numbers on him, that it could certainly change some things. But yeah. uh, I see a bunch of quality guys that can grow, but not a deny Dennis Sutton right now. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and, and I've I've gone probably a little bit overboard talking about how I think the potential for Matthias Barnwell is the level of the guys that are in the 50s and in the hundreds for the defensive line. Talking about the Jason Moores, the Derek LeBlancs of this class. His length at 6'5 and his pad level, it is comparable. But as you point out, the whole thing is the question of how does the growth work? And you just don't know. You just have no idea when it comes to how somebody's going to physically develop over time if they actually become you know, that perfect 310-pound behemoth with quickness in the middle, or if they become something different. And that's not mm-hmm. that's not a development flaw. That is just the reality that's yet to be discovered. Um, we talked about at the beginning, you said this just now, and you said it before, talking about defensive end. Is Penn State's going to find somebody because they're Penn State. They'll be able to flip a commit, maybe like a Yazid Haynes who blows up from Rutgers after decommitting. Uh, similar situation, it feels like, with, uh, and I'm going to bring up the name here so that you don't have to, D- Nikhil Betrand? 
Did I do it right? Mm-hmm. Who visited this yeah. week? Seems like a surprise yeah. visit uh, in the middle of the week for Penn State. I, I think, yes, I would. I don't know that he's like their top guy, though. They're, they're, okay. I'm going to keep that those names off the board. If you're on our board, you know who I'm talking about right now. There are two other guys. Of course, Evan Link, Samson Okalola. We everybody knows them. Yep. I have a couple other guys there that I think Penn State has a little more interest in at the moment. But a uh, veteran's certainly a player I need to learn more about. He did come for an unofficial visit this past weekend. You know, he put out a top ten. Well, first off, he's committed to Colorado, then put out a top ten. And then that top ten didn't include Penn State, but then he did visit Penn State this weekend. So uh, Nikhil's just a guy I gotta learn more about. But from what I've gathered so far, you know, I still see Samson, Evan Link. Those are the guys they're really going to push hard for, no doubt about it. I have two other guys that, like I said, we're going to keep those names behind the, the behind the paywall for now. And then veterans probably fifth on that list. So I want to get a better – now, of course, I need to circle back, though, and, and speak with people. I, it's We're taping this Friday morning, veteran left campus Thursday uh, afternoon, evening. I, I haven't spoken with people about that visit yet. So talk to me on Tuesday for the podcast, and I might be, you know, putting cleaning out my mouth here and and, and telling you guys I was completely wrong with that. And now he's up there with Evan Link. So who yeah. knows? But he he is from what just, I know right now, no. Just just watching the film, this is a Josh Miller type player. So mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say that he's a tackle watching him. Now he's six foot six according to the on three um database that's a number i need to clarify too by the way yep. like i try to cut you off there but that's that's a big thing i need to ask uh, penn state here i mean i don't know when i'm going to get it because they're there's <laughs> that's a problem like <laughs> they're diving maybe- into this huge weekend yeah so sunday yeah. monday i could probably circle back with people about this but I, I there's i can't bug anybody for the next two days so we'll see yeah yeah so i just from a from a viewing of his profile his physical skills run blocker big already seems like he's got a good body type not overly wasty in any part of his his physique but he's a josh miller type i'd say he's not a tackle prospect in my mind with the foot quickness and some of the rawness about his technique so evan link samson oklahoma the other guys are talking about if penn state's looking for a tackle i agree i would not be looking here but if you're looking to replace josh miller there's a similar skill set there um, but obviously at a different level. So it just interesting, and I just it reminded me of what you said. Somebody who's committed to a different program, Penn State's going to be able to find some guys in the process to make up for some of these positions where they don't have an answer or they've lost a player, whether or not it's uh, Betrand or or if it's somebody else. It, it just the story's never written. It seems like until the the, mm-hmm. the until the paper is signed, the story is not written in recruiting. 